Uh, good afternoon, and can I thank Kirin and her colleagues, first of all, for the invitation to be here with you today. And um, I particularly thank Start Strong for the opportunity to have just listened to uh, the questions and the debate, um, and to hear the passion in the voices, uh, to hear the problems, um, because I think it's important that as Minister for Education and Skills, I do hear the issues in the sector. And, and that's why I want to, I, I've said that one of my main priorities since becoming minister is to address issues around the early years. Um, I think it's an extraordinary and um, wonderful privilege to work with young children, to see how they learn through play and through exploration, and to see uh, the rapid uh, way in which young people uh, develop in those early years. And I also think that it's important that those early years are not divorced from the school system, from the education system, from the primary school system. So I do actually think it's important that the Department of Education and Skills and I as Minister am directly engaged in the preschool years. Um, and that's why um, I do think it's important that we have inspection from the education perspective. And um, I've just had a very brief opportunity to have a look at the, uh, the publication from Start Strong. But I know that um, a very central element of that, while all of the issues around funding and so on are in it as well, um, the issue of quality and educational quality and content are central to the recommendations here. And I know that they're central to what each and every one of you does in your daily job every day of the week. So, um, so I... Um, I'm making a strong argument for the importance of education inspections in the early years. And I'm very interested to hear your views on it. And I think that this is the start of a dialogue. I'm sure you've had dialogue previously. But certainly I see this as part of a dialogue. And I see it as very important that I, as Minister for Education and Skills, am here to hear your frustrations, um, but also to recognise the extraordinary importance of what you do in that sector. So I just want to say that to begin with. Um, and as someone who has worked with very young children, I also know how critical investment in the early years can be. And um, while we've had the, uh, the one year free preschool, um, there is consideration of a second year. Now, as you all know, we simply have been struggling with funds for the last few years right across the economy. We've been struggling for economic recovery so that we will have money to invest. Um, and that's what I, along with colleagues, have been doing for the past few years. But right across all sectors, there simply hasn't been extra money to invest. In fact, in fact every single government department has had to face cutbacks um, in the past few years. So that's just the reality of where we are now. But it's not the reality of where we want to be, and certainly not the reality of where I want to be. I have about 16 months left as Minister. I've only, I was only appointed a few months ago. Um, that's if we go if the government goes full term. I may have less than 16 months. I believe that is enough time to make a difference, but not to fix every problem that exists across the education sector. As Minister, there are two areas that I want to place a particular focus on. First is increasing investment in education, and, putting, and the second one is putting early years at the heart of the education system. My first priority is to achieve greater investment in education, including in the early years. Start strong. Sorry. In the last budget, I started that work delivering the first increase in educational spending in recent years. It was a modest increase, just 60 million euros over the 2014 spending. But it has allowed us to bring reductions in education spending to an end. It has allowed us to provide the teachers and funding necessary to support the growth in student numbers in our schools. And it's also allowed us to fund reforms that will improve the quality of the education our children receive. Reforms such as the literacy and numeracy strategy, the reform of the junior cycle, which I know is quite controversial at the moment, and the introduction of education-focused early years inspections, which have just been discussed quite strongly here. As our economy continues to recover, the proceeds of that recovery must be used to repair and rebuild our society. I believe passionately in the value of education. There's no other job in politics that I would have wanted to have. This is the one that I wanted. I believe that more than any other area, education can help us to build a better society. Start Strong and others in the early years sector have repeatedly argued that greater public investment is required. And I agree with that. I want to work with my colleague James Riley and his department 
and with all of you to identify how such investment can best be targeted to improve the quality and quantity of early years education provided to our children. Delivering such investment will require shifting public opinion so that the importance of investment in early years is recognised by all. As Minister, I am determined to put the early years at the heart of our education system. Already, the embracing of play and exploration that happens in early year settings has begun to inform teaching and learning in our primary schools. And I actually do think that the connection between early years and primary schools is important. So that's why I would, to some extent, take issue with the suggestion that, you know, the Department, that the Department of Education shouldn't be involved in these inspections. Because we do, the, the transition and the, the, the type of learning that happens in early years is now more and more the type of learning that happens in the early years of our primary schools as well. And the two have to be interlinked. Implementation of Ashtar and Shielta in both early years and primary schools is really needed to keep play central to the learning experience of our small children. But that can't happen without support. My department and the Department of Children and Youth Affairs have to work closely on this, and I think the two inspectors have just agreed that. One area where we've done that already is through the creation of Better Start, which Margaret was just talking about, the, the new National Early Years Quality Support Service. This is a model that has worked very well in the school system where support services have underpinned innovation and improvements in quality for many years. The National Council for Curriculum and Assessment is currently developing a practice guide that will distill key principles from Ashtar and Shielta. That guide will be available to support the Better Start service in engaging with early years providers. As you're aware, we're also in the process of introducing education-focused preschool inspe inspections for the first time. You're very well aware of that. The Department of Children have provided the funding for dedicated early years inspectors who will be employed alongside our school inspectors. And, and Gary has already outlined details of this for you, and I don't want to repeat anything that he has said. Except I want to give you two assurances. Firstly, these inspections will complement and not duplicate the inspections carried out by TUSLA. And secondly, the inspections will be developed in close collaboration and consultation with the early years sector. We will make every effort to ensure that we don't create unnecessary administrative burdens for our early years settings. And we will work to make sure that these inspections will help to support improvements in the sector. Since my appointment as Minister, there are two other announcements that I have made in, in relation to early years, and indeed Kirin has just referred to them. So I just want to give a little more detail on those. Firstly, we're going to carry out the first major review of education and training programmes that lead to qualifications in early years care and education. And I'll be launching the consultation process for this review in January. And again, I'm very keen to hear the views of people in this room and all of the stakeholders in this, for this review. As part of the review, the views of anyone with an interest in early years education will be sought. As well as carrying out a general consultation, we will carry out specific surveys of education institutions delivering programmes, early years practitioners who hold these qualifications, and employers of early years practitioners. This review will help to ensure that early years qualifications provide our graduates with the knowledge, skills and dispositions that have been identified through the core report and elsewhere as being central to supporting quality educational outcomes for all children in all early years settings. I've also announced that I will create an advisory group on early years education issues. This afternoon, I'll be publishing the full list of organisations who are being invited to nominate members to this advisory group, which will report to me twice a year. And I'll also be publishing the terms of reference of the group. I've sought to ensure that all major organisations, including Start Strong, Early Childhood Ireland and Barnardo's, are included in that group. And I also recognise the importance of associations and unions representing those working in the sector. And so ACP, INTO and IMPACT will also be represented. But they're not the only ones, there are a number of other um, people as well. It will never be possible to include every organisation or individual with an interest in this area but I intend that the group will regularly organise plenary sessions through which a much broader range of voices can be heard. Um, so there are, I suppose, the three areas that, um, that I wanted to update you on. Um, I intend that the advisory group in particular um, will 
have an open door in terms of listening to the voices. And I intend to have a structure in it that will involve consultation um, with yourselves, with people who work in the sector, um, and to ensure that, um, that what we're able to do over the next few years is something that's going to be positive, that is going to be inclusive, and that is going to hear the voice of the sector. Um, as I say, I've, I've had an opportunity to hear your views in particular on the issue of the inspections. Um, I will reflect on that and I will come back with, uh, in conjunction with colleagues um, because we want to work across the two departments um, in relation to the concerns you've raised. Uh, I know that other concerns are around um, the lack of funding in the sector and the difficulty of, of continuing um, with the, the pressures, with the cost pressures that, that are in the sector. But I think one of the ways in which that is can be addressed is the point I made in the beginning, that we actually have to make the early years centre. We have to bring it forward as a sector that is valued. Um, you can be sure the higher education sector is well able to, to shout for itself. Um, you can be sure that other sectors um, have their voices heard, I think, in the public sphere more loudly than your sector does. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to ensure that you are given your proper position in, 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 the, whole, in the whole system. Um, I also just briefly, before I finish, just want to refer to the cross-departmental work because in many areas of public life, we have been in our silos. You know, we've had different departments and, you know, it's true of all departments, have certain responsibilities and not crossing over. I mean, you could, education and health is another area where we, we need to be much more closely aligned in lots of ways. Education and children and youth affairs obviously needs to be closely aligned because we, we're by and large dealing with, with um, the same population for a lot of it anyway. Um, so we have to work together. The fact that you know, we both have inspection systems does not mean that that should simply be making more work for all of you. It actually should be about complement, com complementarity. It should, about, should be about the two departments working together to make things better for everybody. Um, so, you know, I, I, do, I strongly believe that we need an awful lot more cross-departmental collaboration in the work that we do as ministers and as government departments. So, um, I know I haven't answered all your concerns, um, but I'm glad I've had the opportunity, particularly to hear you before I started speaking myself. Um, I do want to um, continue to consult with the sector, and um, in terms of the three elements that, um, that I, I've been talking about today, I particularly want to, uh, to hear your views, and not just hear your views, but hopefully to be able to respond appropriately to the strong views that you hold. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I hope this is the beginning of an engagement rather than anything else. So thank you very much.